Okay. There are not too many people that have extensive uh, study in uh, art theory, um, photography, and uh, ancient dialectics of Greek. Um, let's talk about... Um, this is a statement I made. This is totally a my quote that, uh, you know, half of a photograph, actually more in my opinion, is uh, not resolution, but emotion. And uh, isn't it uh, so coincidental, and I made a video about this a year ago, not this specifically, but in a roundabout fashion, that uh, all pictures are either a prime mover or a self mover. I don't want to get into the heuristics of the Aristos Dias, or uh, the Cosmos Nuitos, or the Cosmos Ethitos, is that the Cosmos of uh, Existentia and Empirica, and the, the, uh, the Cosmos of, uh, you know, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of being, of Ontos, but every picture is not resolution and color saturation, and, you know, that's the discussion about lenses, I mean, crappy lenses versus good lenses. Everybody keeps talking about the resolution or how sharp... Uh, as I said before, some of the most beautiful images are, uh, are uh, you know, fuzzy, they're blurry, and, uh, you know, they, they evoke emotion. It's about getting the correct composition. And, uh, you know, when something goes down, I mean, I'm the first person to grab a camera to get in there. Um, not that there's much happens around here anyway. <laughs> um, but, you know, just why don't people think about that? I mean, they, they always are thinking about beauty. I mean, if beauty is that is is your thing, that's understandable. I mean, what we're moved to is the logos and the composition of the shot, that which emulates or is a, uh, a reciprocal derivative of the one, i.e. the logos, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the principle in a picture which is most beautiful. I mean, then we can get into symmetry and the golden ratio of a shot and how beautiful someone's face is and we could talk about uh, you know the dialectic of uh, of beauty, and get into uh, Greek metaphysics and what represents beauty in a shot. But you know, to dumb it down really simply. I mean, talk about art theory forever, but most people don't want to hear about that, nor do they want to hear about field theory. I mean, I could talk about that forever, but extremely few people want to talk about it or hear about it. But I mean, every picture is either a self mover or it has a universal logo. So self mover or a, uh, a universal logos, or uh, it's either attractive or repulsive. You know, a picture that is as attractive... By the way, human emotions work no different than field theory when it pertains to magnetism. We have centrifugal divergence, repulsion, force in motion, something that pushes you away like a really gritty photograph, you know, from, uh, you know, some of the most gripping photographs that'll make you go, <gasps> oh my god. You know, gruesome war photography. You know, starving children. Like I forget, some uh, photographer took a picture of some child that was like holding a cracker or something like that, and the child like died in the upright sitting position, holding a piece of food, and uh, it, it haunted that photographer until the point that he ended up killing himself because the picture just haunted his soul. Um, you know, it does not have to draw you in. It can, as long as the picture moves you is it, it contains within itself either the force or motion or inertia and acceleration, the very principles that actually underlie. See, you kind of see how the entire universe is connected at every level. We have a sort of self-same holographic sort of self-similarity or fractal uh, patterns of uh, motion and acceleration. And photography is absolutely not to really, really, really dumb down art theory and... Uh, and uh, discuss the heuristics, uh, excuse me, the heuristics, the, uh, the logos, the universal logos, and, uh, and uh, you know, the prime mover and the universal logos within photography. I understand it's not about resolution. I said half the photograph, and likely more. Let me just say half the photograph. It's not resolution or color saturation. It is about emotion. It's the composition of the shot. And uh, a crop, I've heard some idiots out there say that they never crop their shot. I mean, anybody that says they never crop their shots is a moron. There's someone out there that famously says that. That's like one of the most stupid, asinine BS statements I've ever heard. I mean, I met some of the best photographers in the world that would drop by photography school. And you, you, if you said that sort of crap to any of them, they would just laugh at you and, and you know, quite possibly spit in your face. So statement like, statements like that are incredibly stupid. And I recently said that uh, about maybe 30% of your rejected 
pictures that you thought were compositionally invalid, even if they were in focus and everything like that, they could be cropped to where they would have mode of value. Now, mode of value is of one of two kinds. It either draws you in vis-a-vis -vis beauty or intrigue, or it repulses you. War photographs, you know, uh, um, fighting and protests. I mean, the photographs work exactly the same way the field theory uh, principles do as far as a transverse force in motion and a centripetal uh, convergence. You know, they either draw you in vis-a-vis -vis their beauty or their intrigue or their mystery or they repulse you. They move you in one fashion or the other. You know, a boring photograph is one that makes you ponder picking your nose instead of, you know, moving at all. I mean, the worst photograph is one that, uh, you know, does not have within itself not a single ounce of motive of value. And whether that motive is centripetal, meaning drawing in, or it's centrifugal, force in motion, repelling you out, or it contains within itself a lack thereof of a universal logos, a symmetry, a beauty of simplicity that is reflexive within the subconscious of uh, human comprehension, which is, by the way, not cultural but universal. There are principles of, and the Greeks, uh, the Plotinus talks about this at, at great length, there are within things that are so universal at the subconscious level that they are transcendent to society and they're transcendent to uh, ethnicity, they're transcendent to uh, cultures, and uh, they are fundamental movers. I mean, this has been studied at great length in children before they're able to speak as far as what they recognize as beauty or things with uh, symmetry. This is the, uh, the inherent uh, subconscious universal logos that is uh, transcendent to society and all other forms of, uh, of uh, socialist uh, uh, socialism, not socialism, but uh, uh, studies of uh, socialistic behavior and uh, of, uh, you know, uh, of learned behavior. They're completely innate at the very primordial level before we'd even develop speech. And these primordial, uh, primordial comprehensions and recognitions of like the universal logos and principles of simplicity, kind of like this beautiful rounded stone you know, uh, lie uh, within us. And so all pictures are that way, if they're good at all. If they have any decency at all, you know, they, they, they either impel or repel, or they have within them a universal logos. So there really are only those three type of pictures, or the intermix of those three type of pictures. Um, they're repulsive, or they're impulsive, or they contain with them, within themselves a universal logos, or a combination of the three or more than one thereof. All good pictures at any level have that, and there is no exception to that. They have that mystery, that beautiful logos, or they're repulsive, or they contain a universal logos of symmetry and many other things that we could talk about for hours and hours and hours. You know, a picture is as, uh, is as valid on the positive scale as it is on the negative scale. A picture is as valid if it draws you in and you find it beautiful as another picture that is so repulsive it's like me throwing the stone and conking you in the damn forehead, you know. Um, all those forms of photography are equally valid and uh, they're equally, equally stared into and reflexively comprehended on a subconscious level that draws us in. Even the pictures that repulse us draw us in because they are motive. If we're standing still, what is moved that is draws us into the picture um, is always present. Uh, I could, you know, I studied the art theory extensively, especially the works, the, the one true master, and I own the rights to his works, by the way, granted to me by his son, Rama Pikumaraswami, the works of Anand Kitish Kumaraswamy, who uh, died in 47, and he knew 27 languages, and he wrote over 50 books, and he wrote thousands of articles. I became friends with his son, who was a, a cardiac surgeon who died uh, several years ago, but he granted me the rights to his father's works, and uh, I can post up most of those, um, but I have complete rights as long as I give them away and I don't sell them, as granted to me by his son, but you know, you need to start thinking about photography that way and the, compos the nature of the composition as far as, is it a mover? I mean, is it a prime mover? Is it impulsive or repulsive? Or does it contain within itself a universal logos which is transcendent 
uh, to uh, cultural uh, um, norms of, uh, of, uh, of a predisposition as far as how we're brought up and how we're trained. I mean, there are always those things that are, that are absolutely primordial that have nothing to do with society or language or, you know, whether you're, you know, some naked person wearing a loincloth or an Eskimo up in Alaska. They are absolutely uh, primordial to uh, human consciousness, and uh, I said, my my little quote was that uh, you know half a picture is uh, is emotion, and uh, if not more actually, especially on a photograph that's really fuzzy, right? You've got no resolution at all. I mean, it's fuzzy. There is enough there to move you, and uh, photography is an art form. I mean, we can talk about gear and sniffing. Sniffing uh, megapixels or petapixels, and you know, sniffing raw files and uh, pixel pitches, and God knows I've made hundreds and I made thousands of videos about the gear, but that's just to save people money, you know. It's you know, it's about saving money and pointing you towards the right lens so you don't piss your money away on some sort of crappy ass lens. I mean, you know, that's helpful too. There are many different ways of being helpful, but uh, you know, a brief study of the most fundamental principles of art theory and uh, you know the compositional factors that uh, that move someone. Um, you know should be either understood. Some people have it innately; it's always within them. And other people, it has to be learned. It's been suppressed through brainwashing in schools, or who knows what other sort of uh, mental brainwashing has occurred in your life or anybody else's life. So some people don't have it innately. Some people can like play the piano at six, and other people could like, uh, you know practice the piano until they're 60 years old and they still suck at it so but, uh, anyway so that was a short little very that was actually an extremely condensed video on the art theory and uh, the principles of uh, composition and what to think about and it's so ironic and yet so irreducibly simplex that uh, that that which uh, impels or motivates someone in a picture is absolutely no different than the principles that dominate field theory as far as repulsion or attraction you know they're the exact same principles and one is emotional another one is uh, and neither one of them have any existential uh, quantity you know you can no more weigh a radio signal than you could weigh a feeling or you could weigh a field a field has no quantity to weigh you know um, an emotion has nothing to weigh so we're dealing with true metaphysics all art is at its very core pure metaphysics. You can talk about the camera and the physical nature of the camera you want, but you know, when you start talking about light and capturing light, light has no substantiality. It is uh, purely a field perturbation. So people don't understand that either. Their minds never get that deep. Either that or they don't want to get deep. How's, how's that old so song go by Edie Brickell? says, shove me in the shallow waters before I get too deep. Some people don't want to get deep into anything, which is fine. Whatever. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye.